morning guys I'm Dave Cadbury at the Pathfinder School out here on the Pathfinder School property and it's very very windy today I've got a piece of sheep's wool actually tied to the microphone of the camera I hope that's going to cover the wind um, what I wanted to do today was I wanted to do a review for you guys on a very historic firearm this is a re recent acquisition of mine um, it is a Winchester model 1897 there are a lot of really cool historical things about this gun that I want to talk to you guys about. It's got some really cool features that were innovative and state of the art for its time. This particular gun, by the serial numbers on both the forward and the receiver, which it's a takedown model, and we'll talk about that. Um, if you trace those serial numbers, this gun was manufactured between 1907 and 1908. So this gun's well over 100 years old, and it still fires like new money today. Stay with me, guys. Okay, guys, um, I wrote myself a few notes here, so hope you don't mind, but I didn't want to miss anything when I was kind of talking about this gun with you guys. It has a lot of historical value to me. You know, I am very much into history. I like doing things in historical fashion. That's part of what I call immersion training. Um, we've talked about that in videos before. So this is the Winchester Model 1897. It was produced from 1897 to 1957. It was designed by John Browning, okay? It had a thicker receiver on it so that it could accept what then was not very common, smokeless powder. And that's very important because this is one of the first pump action shotguns that could ever shoot the modern powders. And this shotgun was made in 1907, so even then, modern powders were not that popular. But this thing shoots modern powder like new money. And I'll show you guys that here in just a little while. Um, one of the things that I really think is cool about this gun is, is that it's, it's a very bulletproof type firearm in that it was used in five different wars throughout the woods and everywhere else to hunt with and take game for families. But the important thing is for a firearm to be used in a war or a conflict, most of the time they have to be pretty bulletproof. Now there are exceptions to that obviously and a lot of changes are made to certain firearms throughout history to make them better. But this gun had very little changes throughout its history, almost none, to be honest with you, other than, you know, length of barrel, calibers, bayonet adapters, things like that. Um, this was used in the Philippine-American War. It was used in World War I, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. So this gun saw a lot of action. It's got a five-round tube magazine, which means if you put one in the hole and five in the tube, it has a six-shot capacity. As I said, it was designed with a thicker receiver to be able to handle smokeless powders of the time. Now, one of the interesting things about this, and I'm going to show you this when we go out and shoot this thing a little bit, is there's no disconnect between the trigger and the hammer. So if you hold the trigger down and you work the action, the hammer will come forward every time and actually shoot this gun every time you pump it without squeezing the trigger. And that was called slam fire. And we'll talk about that when we go out and shoot it. They produced over one million of these, and the original selling price of this gun was $25. And this is another thing that I feel is interesting <coughs> about this gun, is I bought this gun um, at a flea market. I got a really good deal on it compared to what they're worth, or I wouldn't have bought it. Um, I paid $250 for it. But even at that, I paid 10 times what this gun was sold for brand new. That tells you not only about inflation, but it also tells you about the appreciation of the value of firearms. So let's take this thing and I want to show you one feature with it real quick that was very interesting because this shotgun was made in what they call a takedown model. Okay, and this is a takedown model. They also made a solid frame. But the takedown model wasn't really made for the things that we think about takedowns for nowadays where we think, oh, if I had a takedown, I could put that in my backpack or my go bag, or whatever the case may be. This gun was made as a takedown for ease of maintenance so that you could clean the barrel easier. And we're going to show you how that works right now. Okay, so to take this shotgun down, all you did was press this detent pin on the magazine and rotated it in the opposite direction, basically releasing it from the receiver. At that point, you can see that that thing moves. That magazine is now free and loose. And all you did was turn this gun just like that, and it came into two pieces. Now, you can see how much that gives you ease of maintenance now because you've got access to the magazine tube if needs be, and you've got direct access to the barrel to clean that thing and swab that barrel out really good. You've got good access to all the inner workings of the receiver and things like that. 
and it makes it much easier to clean. Now we would think of this takedown as not very packable because you've got this you know 30 inch modified choke barrel on here and this is a modified choke this came in several different choke patterns and things like that this one I got lucky was a modified choke when I found it that's my favorite choke pattern but at any rate we wouldn't think of this thing as too packable now if somebody had the gumption which I can't do that to a historical piece of weaponry but as one of my friends John Timms pointed out you know if you had this thing cut down to a 20 inch barrel or an 18 inch barrel and had it set up to put some multiple chokes in like turkey chokes and things like that then you'd have a really compact two-piece firearm but I can't bring myself or couldn't bring myself to cut this barrel off and change the, the history of this firearm because you have no idea how many things this has probably killed or where it's been since 1907 okay so when we want to put this thing back together all we do is insert the barrel back into the receiver twist it over make sure our magazine Push back into the receiver, turn it, push the detent pin back in place, which allows doesn't allow the magazine tube to turn anymore, and we're ready to go. Now, one of the features or one of the things that was a problem with this gun for some people, as you can see, this whole bolt assembly comes to the rear and to the outside when you pump this shotgun. So if you had your thumb too far up on top of this thing, when you put that back, you were going to have a problem because it was going to take off a big chunk of your thumb if you were doing it in a hurry. Now, the only safety feature of this gun is half cock. When it's on half cock and you pull the trigger, the trigger will not engage. So, with that said, let's take this thing out and uh, shoot a few rounds and show you what slam fire is. Okay, guys, I got an old uh, gas can or something like that out of a trash pile. It's actually got a hole in the bottom of it, so it's no good to really make anything out of or recycle probably make a dandy fine stove if it had been one piece a little uh, stove for a small shelter but anyway that's another video that was not in good shape so we can't use it for that I'm gonna zoom in on a little bit for you so you can see it right there and I'm gonna zoom back out I've got that thing at what I would call rabbit distance about 12 steps maybe a little more probably about 12 steps okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot eight shot through this gun. I have fired several rounds through this gun already to make sure that it was safe. And I have hip fired it a couple times just again to make sure that nothing was going to go wrong with this gun um, because I am shooting modern powder loads out of it. Now, like I, this is a two and three quarter inch chamber. So I've got two and three quarter inch eight shot loads here that I'm putting in it. Um, I'm only loading the magazine with three. And I'm really only going to shoot one because I want to show you, you know, that the gun patterns really well. And then we're going to show you how to slap fire the gun. So, just like any other pump action shotgun, once you've loaded it, now there's no button you've got to push or anything like that. Once you've got the hammers forward right now and once that magazine's got rounds in it, you can, do, you can put a round in the chamber just that simple. You can see how close that was to my hand right there, okay? The block drops down. When it comes back up, it's going to feed the round, and the bolt will be ready, just like that, okay? I'm going to put this thing on forward. Now I'm going to back up behind the camera and shoot that can. Kind of an over-the-shoulder type look. Okay, let's take a look at that pattern. Okay, guys, take a look at that, and you tell me. I mean, at 12 yards, there'd be nothing left of a game animal at 12 yards of that thing with eight shot, okay? That is one heck of a pattern at that distance with that gun. Okay, guys, so I haven't ejected my last round yet, so remember that when I rock the slide backwards and go forward, if I'm holding the trigger down, it's going to fire the next round. That's called slap fire. I'm not going to have to pull the trigger, just hold it down. I've moved the camera over in front of a pile of scrap, like tin roofing over here, so we can pattern the gun and see what it does. I'm going to hip fire this gun. We're going to back the camera up just a little bit, and I'm going to hip fire and slap fire this gun three times to show you what that is. So let's back this camera up just a shade here. So you can kind of see me and the gun and the junk pile all at the same time here. Okay, here we go.
Gun's empty. Okay. That slap fire. Okay, guys, well, I'm Dave Canberra with Pathfinder School, and I hope you enjoyed this short little review and historical discussion of the Model 1897 Winchester pump action shotgun. This is quickly becoming one of my very favorite firearms. You know, I'm still very fond of a single shot. I know that that thing is bomb proof no matter what, less moving parts. But obviously, if this thing's been through, you know, all of those years, and it's a hundred year old gun now, over a hundred years old, and it still fires just like it was brand new, there's got to be something to be said for that. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys.